In this video, we will discuss economic order quantity model. Most commonly, it is observed as EOQ model. This is one of the oldest and most commonly known technique. This model was first developed by Ford Harris and R. Wilson independently in 1915. The objective is to determine economic order quantity Q which minimizes the total cost of an inventory system when demand occurs at a constant rate. Let us first have assumptions on which we will be discussing EOQ model. The system deals with single item. The demand rate of R units per time unit is known and constant. Shortages are not allowed. Lead time is zero. <coughs> Replenishment rate is infinite. Replenishment size Q is a decision variable and T is cycle time. The inventory holding cost H per unit per time unit and ordering cost A per order is known and constant during the period under review. At each replenishment, Q units are ordered and stocked in the system. Demand occurs at the rate of R units per time minute during the cycle time t. So q is equal to r into t. That q of t denotes on hand inventory at time t of a cycle. Then the differential equation that describes the instantaneous state of Q of t, where t lies between 0 and capital T, is given by dq by dt is equal to negative r, t lies between 0 and capital T. With initial condition, q0 is equal to q and we already know q is equal to rt. So, the solution of equation is given by Q of small t is equal to R into T minus T, where T lies between 0 and capital T. Next step is to find average inventory I1Q in the system per time unit. And it is given by I1 of Q equal to, because we want it per time unit, so we have a factor 1 by T. Integration 0 to t, qt, dt. Integrate r of r into t minus t with respect to small t between 0 to t gives rt by 2. But we already know rt is equal to q. So, average inventory in the system per time unit is q by 2 which is given by area that is purple shaded area. So total cost TCQ of an inventory system per time unit is sum of inventory holding cost and ordering cost. Inventory holding cost is HQ by 2 and ordering cost is AR by Q. So total cost TCQ is HQ by 2 plus AR by Q. We are, work, we are having a non-linear function in Q and decision variable is capital Q. Use classical optimization technique that is derivative of first order derivative of total cost with respect to Q equal to 0 and simplify it, it gives Q0 is equal to square root of 2 ARH. Second derivative of total cost with respect to Q is 2AR upon Q0Q 
A and R are positive. Q0 is also positive for all Q. So, the total cost TCQ0 obtained is minimum. Let us see the graphical representation of total cost. Total cost is sum of holding cost and ordering cost. Denote total holding cost by TC1Q and ordering cost by AR by Q. So now total cost is TC1Q plus TC2Q. So TC1Q is passing from the origin and ordering cost is decreasing with respect to Q. So and the point of intersection of TC1Q and TC2Q is Q0 and correspondingly we will have optimum total cost which is in the figure is TCQ0. Let us have some uh, sim notes. If unit cost is taken into account then total sum total cost of Q units will be purchase cost, holding cost and ordering cost summation. Now we have demand of R units and it is purchase at rupees C. So CR is purchase cost, HQ by 2 is holding cost and AR by Q is ordering cost. We can visualize that purchase cost is independent of Q. So the optimum quantity which we obtain in previous explanation that is Q0 is 2 AR by Q will not get affected even if purchase cost is taken into account. Second observation one can have from this expression is as purchase cost is constant it will simply get added into total cost without contributing in finding economic order quantity. Second note is if P is a selling price per unit then gross revenue is difference of selling price and cost price with respect into demand. So net profit is difference of gross revenue and total cost. Now you can see that gross revenue is also independent of Q. So Q0 which was obtained earlier as square root 2AR upon H will not affect even in computing net, net, uh, net profit or I can say that profit maximization is equivalent to total cost where Q0 is given by square root 2AR upon H. Now let us see what are the limitations of uh, economic order quantity model. In practice, demand neither remains certain nor uniform over the time. What I meant by demand hardly remains constant with certainty on it depletes uniformly that is very ideal situation. So, if the fluctuations are mild, the formula is practically valid. But when fluctuations are wild, that means if too much fluctuation has come up in demand, the formula loses its validity. Second one, it is not easy to measure the inventory holding cost and ordering cost accurately. Because we have seen earlier Ordering cost comprises of transportation cost and transportation cost varies from day to day because of change in prices of the petrol. So obviously ordering cost will change. Similarly for inventory holding cost it is very difficult to say the rate of inventory carrying charge fraction because that depends upon huge number of factors. So they hardly remain constant and indirectly I can say that inventory holding cost hardly remains constant. Okay. Second can be the ordering cost may not be fixed 
but will depend on the order quantity q. So that also suggests that the formula of q0 that is economic order quantity which we have derived as square root 2a r upon s will not remain valid. The assumptions of zero lead time and inventory level will reach to zero at the time of the next replenishment is also not possible. We cannot have the inventory system empty. That is what it says that inventory level which reaches to zero at the time of next replenishment. So this happens very rarely. So once again formula will not remain, formula of economic order quantity will not remain valid in such situation. The stock depletion is rarely uniform and gradual. If you visualize the figure, we have a depletion by a straight line. This happens very rarely. Okay. It will have some zigzag form. So we, the formula is not valid because uh, stock depletion is hardly uniform and gradual. One may have to take into account the constraints of floor space, capital investment, and many more components in stocking the items in the inventory system. So, as a whole, under idealistic situation, EOQ works well, but if there are wild fluctuations, this will mislead to the inventory control manager.